Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Um, this is a good question, and I'm not sh- in. It's the mix of all the fundamental indicators, you know, Treasury, gold, oil, interest rates, um, yen carry. T- the, and that was my point. There's so many of them out there that it gets very, very confusion, confusing. Um, try and stick. Try and think of interest rate policy and the expectation the market has for interest rates, and see how the reality of interest rates play out. Um, that's one, and look at interest rate differentials, and just look at background economic growth um, and the expectations for growth. You have to understand what the consensus expectations are to build scenarios and then to see how it comes out, because if you don't know what the consensus expects, when you see growth released or interest rate policy made, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So first focus on the interest rate policy and understand the major yield differentials in, in the countries, and then just think more of background economic growth. And as you start to understand that more, then you can get more nuance and go deeper into some more um, specific indicators. Uh, we often see inverse correlation between stocks uh, and, and the U.S. dollar. Uh, what is the logic behind that? The logic, as I showed you, is the U.S. dollar is the funding currency, and when we create more dollar supply through quantitative easing to pump up global asset markets um, and to push out into you know, other world economies, um, it tends to juice the markets. Cash is the mother's milk of equities. And, but all this cash being created by the Fed and all this public debt being created creates more dollar supply. Very good for asset markets, but very bad for the dollar, and that's why that correlation is very, very tight, and that's the logic behind that. How can treasuries, among other things, help us determine market direction? <clears throat> Treasuries are, is a market that's, that's, that has a, is not as tight a correlation, but is very correlated. Treasury markets' um, prices tend to go up uh, during risk aversion period when people come in to hide. You also notice Treasury is still acting very well, even though all this money is being pushed out in the world. And Treasury's, um, you know, l- one of the reasons that we were concerned about the stock market is we saw a break in correlation between Treasuries on a weekly basis compared to the S&P. Uh, treasuries are going down, 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 and then they started to move up with the stock market, which they shouldn't have done if, it, if we had all this healing and all this improvement in the global economy. Treasury prices started, should have continued down, but they didn't, and it was a bit of a precursor. So that's how you can use it for market direction. It tends, uh, on a weekly basis, um, tends to move with the dollar. Higher treasury prices, ho- higher dollar prices at the moment. That's the way you can use it. But the correlation isn't as tight as the stock market. What is the lowest time frame you trade and why? We happen to trade in a lot of time frames just because of the, we offer services across them. My uh, Personally, you know, from, a, from the ease of trading, because we like the fundamentals, you know, our time frame, even, in the, even in, the, in the spot market, tends to be a position trader. We like to hold for a few days or a week in the spot market if we can, because we, if that's the case, we know we're making money. Um, you know, three-month time frames, you know, in the currency option um, to six-month time frame is, is really, you know, what we like because it gives us time, you know, especially a six-month, gives us time to let our fundamental analysis play out. Um, and so those are the time frames we tend to use there. Can you elaborate a little um, on the CRB. That's a commodities research board. It used to be, and it's just a it's just an index of all the different commodities in there, um, in different weights. And you have to be careful. Sometimes something's weighted more highly than other. But in there, you have the physicals. You have food. Um, you have energy. Um, all those types of things are in the commodities. It tends to be the the you know the physical products as opposed to the financials in the in the commodities index. How can a day trader use it? Again, we just see the correlations. Um, commodities tend to be moving on what? Chinese demand. Chinese demand uh, means the globe is growing. Globe is growing. Money is moving offshore. Money moving offshore tends to be bad for the dollar. 
So you can think about it in those time frames. And if you start to see a major divergence in that correlation, um, it may give you a, a setup even on a day trading basis. That's how we use it. We, you, you don't have to look at these things even in a day, t in a, in a in intraday time frame to use them as potential setups for a day trade. If you just look at them in a daily time frame against one another, often if it validates your existing setup technically on a day trade. Um, A lot of questions today. Do you expect a surge in acquisitions of the U.S. corporation by MNCs from the rest of the world? From emerging economies reversing capital flows in the direction of the U.S.? That is really a wonderful question, I meaning some money coming back in. And that's the role that currencies play longer term. They cleanse economies and cleanse the global economy, that rebalancing thing. If you're an international investor and you're looking at real property assets in the U.S. and your currency has gone up 50, 60, 100 percent against the U.S. dollar, those real assets in the U.S., assuming you don't think the U they're going to turn the lights out in the U.S., look very, very cheap. So that currency funneling down creates that cheapness that's going to then start to naturally drawing money in from overseas for that bargain. And remember what I said. Currencies can influence fundamentals. Fundamentals can influence currencies. So as that money comes in, currency starts going up. Those that have been in short-term accounts or those that have put money in say, wow, the trend of the currency is going up. I'm not only making money on the fundamentals but my currency price, so they tend to throw more money at the trend. So then you see that self-feeding process, um, and, and that's what currencies do, and that's why you've heard currencies as pressure valves for economy. They can overshoot and undershoot, and they make the assets tend to look cheap assuming your policies are in place <clears throat> for a rebound in the currencies. So it's a great point, and um, uh, yes, it, it, it can happen, and I think that's part of a longer-term scenario. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.